Now we'll try to understand how a liquid boils. So I've taken a, let's say I've taken water, pure water, that is also on the sea level, means where the atmospheric pressure is highest. You know that uh, atmospheric pressure at sea level is measured as one atmosphere or one atmosphere or it is 760 mm of mercury. That's, that's the atmospheric pressure at sea level. So I've got water. Let's say this water is maintained at 10 degrees Celsius. So even at 10 degrees Celsius, water if can evaporate and forms a small amount of vapor. So at this temperature, let's say vapor pressure of water is around 100 mm. It won't be very much, so just 100 mm. Now what will happen to the vapor pressure of water if you start heating it above 10 degree? Naturally, you know that vapor pressure always increases on heating or on increasing temperature. So when you heat it to 20 degrees Celsius, what happens? Vapor pressure will rise above 100. So let's say it reaches 200 mm. You heat it further, let's say heat it up to 50 degrees Celsius. What happens? Its vapor pressure will rise further beyond 200. Let's say it re, uh, becomes something like uh, 390 mm something like that and um, beyond 50 let's say heat it up to 80 degrees Celsius then what happens vapor pressure will further rise beyond 390 so let's say it increases to around 600 mm and if you keep on heating let's say when it reaches 100 degrees Celsius what happens to its vapor pressure it will rise further beyond 600 so let's say now the vapor pressure becomes 760 mm. You see what has happened to water? It's pure water and when it is heated to 100 degrees Celsius, its vapor pressure is rising up to 760. And remember 760 is also the atmospheric pressure just above the surface of water. The atmospheric pressure is 760 and the vapor pressure of water itself also has risen to 760 at 100. And you know 100 is boiling point of water. So water starts boiling and not just for water, for any liquid this, this, this concept is applicable that a liquid boils at that particular temperature where the vapor pressure of the liquid becomes exactly equal to the atmospheric pressure. In order to boil liquid must equalize its vapor pressure with the atmospheric pressure whenever vapor pressure of the liquid becomes equal to atmospheric pressure at whichever temperature at that temperature liquid starts evaporating very fast and that rapid evaporation is called boiling so you must keep this in mind that if a liquid is at boiling point its vapor pressure at that point if the liquid is pure will be always equals to uh, atmospheric pressure okay so you keep this in mind now i have a diagram here here vapor pressure is plotted against temperature because you know vapor pressure changes with temperature so i just want to see how it changes so on y axis we have vapor pressure and x axis we have temperature and i've taken a pure liquid at low temperature so there's a pure liquid at low temperature so the vapor pressure is here at low temperature vapor pressure is also low now when you start heating this pure liquid when the temperature rises, what happens to vapor pressure? Vapor pressure also starts rising up. So if you keep on heating a liquid, its vapor pressure keeps on rising until the vapor pressure of the liquid becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure. Now, atmospheric pressure is again the normal atmospheric pressure, 760. So this pure liquid is continuously heated and its vapor pressure is rising. And over here at this particular temperature, vapor pressure of this pure liquid becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure that means now at that temp temperature corresponding temperature which i have interpolated here as t1 this pure liquid starts boiling so the boiling point of this pure liquid is t1 because reaching this temperature its vapor pressure equals to atmospheric pressure now i'll prepare a solution by adding non-volatile non-electrolyte solute using the same liquid i'll prepare a solution so this solution is the solution of this liquid containing non-volatile non-electrolyte solute. 
What happens when you prepare a solution? Because you've added impurity, so the vapor pressure of the liquid will go down. So the vapor pressure temperature curve of the solution will be starting from the lower end, not from the higher end, remember. Because uh, at the same temperature, because solution always exhibits lower vapor pressure, that phenomenon is called lowering of vapor pressure. So the vapor pressure temperature curve of the solution will be always uh, uh, you know, lower than the vapor pressure temperature curve of the pure liquid. So this is the vapor pressure temperature curve of the solution of the same liquid. The solution is also initially at low temperature, so vapor pressure is low. When the temperature starts increasing, vapor pressure of the solution also starts increasing. And if you keep on heating, at one point the vapor pressure of the solution also becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure. At that point solution also starts boiling or evaporating very fast. So the corresponding temperature at which the, the solution boil is marked here as T2. Now it is very clear that the T2 this T2 is greater than T1. T2 is greater than T1 mean, means the boiling point of the solution will always be more than the boiling point of its pure solvent. So what has happened here because we added some impurity because we prepared a solution the boiling point of this liquid has gone up it has risen. This phenomenon is called elevation of boiling point of a liquid. So what happens to a liquid what happens to its boiling point on preparing a solution or on adding impurity its boiling point will rise and that is known as elevation of boiling point of a liquid. So this phenomenon of elevation of boiling point of a liquid can be explained very well using this vapor pressure temperature diagram of a pure liquid and its solution. It clearly shows that the boiling point of the liquid uh, always increases when you prepare a solution and the reason why the boiling point of the liquid is increasing is uh, is because of the lowering of vapor pressure because the vapor pressure of the solution is lowered so it's starting from the lower end so it takes more heating for the solution to equalize its vapor pressure with atmospheric pressure so it takes more heating means it naturally boils at a higher temperature than its pure form or pure solvent so this phenomenon is elevation of boiling point okay now there's a law Rawls law you've seen so many Rawls law since the beginning like you have Rawls law on binary mixture of the uh, of uh, of two liquids or volatile liquids and you have Rawls law on the vapor pressure of a solution and now you have a Rawls law uh, you also had a Rawls law on r relative lowering of vapor pressure of a solution now we have the fourth Rawls law Rawls law on the elevation of boiling point of a solution so before we understand this Rawls law I just want you to revise because I know that this was dealt in class 11 also there's a concentration term called molality of a solution It's not molarity but it's molality so what is molality molality of a solution is simply the number of moles of solute dissolved in 1000 gram or 1 kg solvent you take 1 kg of solvent like taking 1 kg of water you add two moles of solute how many moles of solute is present in one kg of water or one kg 1000 grams of solvent one kg is same as 1000 gram two moles and whatever number of moles are there in one kg water or 1000 grams of water is known as the molarity molality of the solution the molality is two because number of moles are two so that means in order to express the concentration of a solution in molality you have to have always 1 kg or 1000 gram of solvent because if you don't have 1000 grams of solvent then you will not be able to say that how many moles are there in 1000 grams of solvent so then you won't be able to express the concentration of solution in molality so that's why I wanted a formula which with which you can express the concentration of any solution without taking 1 kg of water or 1000 grams of water or 1000 grams of solvent you should be able to express the concentration that's why I have taken an anonymous amount of solvent I, I didn't start with 1 kg solvent I just took W1 grams of solvent it could be any 10 gram 20 gram 1000 gram doesn't matter so I've got W1 grams of solvent and let's say it dissolves W2 grams of solute W1 grams solvent dissolves W2 grams of solute which means any amount of solvent is dissolving any amount of solute so we don't have to restrict to 1 kg of solvent all the time but then you know 
number of grams of solute is not going to give me molality because molality is not number of grams of solute it is the number of moles of solute so if you know the mass of solute which is written as w2 can you convert that to moles it is very easy if you have mass you divide mass of the solute by its own molecular mass m2 is the molecular mass of the solute mass of the solute by molecular mass of the solute gives what number of moles so actually i had w1 grams of solvent dissolving w2 grams of solute but i divided that w2 grams of solute with the molecular mass of the solute in order to get the number of moles of solute dissolved there so now we have w1 grams of solvent dissolving these many moles of solute but the number of moles of solute dissolving w1 gram is not molality you have to have 1000 gram so if w1 grams of solute uh, sorry solvent dissolves these many moles of solute then 1000 grams of solvent dissolves how much you can easily calculate by unitary method so w1 goes there and divides and 1000 multiplies so this is the number of moles of solute dissolved in how many grams of solvent 1000 gram and whatever number of moles of solute is dissolved in 1000 grams of solvent that is known as molality so this is molality how do you express molality then you have to have mass of solute by the molecular mass of solute why mass of solute is divided by molecular mass of solute because that gives the number of moles of solute we, we need number of moles of solute no? then it is divided by the mass of solvent and multiplied by 1000 why to divide the mass why to divide by w1 and multiply 1000 because when you divide by the mass of solvent and multiply by 1000 you get the number of moles of solute in 1000 grams of solvent and number of moles of solute in 1000 grams of solvent is molality so you have to keep this formula in mind actually you can't derive every time so you have to keep this formula molality in mind in order to calculate uh, molality uh, while solving problems on Rolle's law of elevation of boiling point okay so again why is molality like this molality is number of moles of solute which we divide which we calculate by dividing mass of solute by molecular mass of solute that gives number of moles and when that number of moles divided the mass of the solvent multiplied by thousand you get the number of moles in thousand grams of solvent and that's how molality is there okay why do we need molality because there's another famous concentration term called molarity already so why do we need molality you know molarity is the number of moles of solute dissolved in one liter solution not one liter solvent also one liter solution so number of moles in one liter solution is molarity in molarity you've got one liter solution that's volume of solution involved and you know that volumes of liquid keeps on changing with the changes in temperature because liquid expands on heating and liquid contracts on cooling so molarity depends on volume that means depends on temperature because when temperature changes volume changes and the molarity changes so we need an, a concentration term which is independent of temperature even if you change temperature the concentration of the solution expressed in this term should not change and that's what we got molality here in molality nowhere you have got volume of anything involved volume of solute is not there volume of solvent is also not there see we have got only masses and masses won't change with the change in temperature so if you express the concentration of a solution in molality at 10 degree and tomorrow you see it at 20 degree it won't differ because molality does not depend on temperature it is temperature independent concentration term and that's why we need this Okay, now let's state Rolle's law on elevation of boiling point. You know what is elevation of boiling point? It is the increase in boiling point of any liquid when you prepare its solution. Now there's Rolle's law. Rolle's law states that elevation of boiling point. Remember this delta Tb is neither the boiling point of pure liquid nor it is the boiling point of the solution. What is it then? This is the amount by which the boiling point increases, which is known as elevation of boiling point. For example, if water boils, pure water boils at 100, and now its solution starts boiling at 102, so delta Tb is that 2 degree from 100 to 102, that rise in boiling point. So this amount by which the boiling point rises, according to Rolle's law, is directly proportional to the molality of the solution. And it's quite logical, because if you add a lot of impurities, what happens? Molality will be high. Molality is the number of moles of solute or impurity you are adding. So you add a lot of impurities, molality will be high and naturally the boiling point will rise quite, quite much, you know, because of too many, too much of impurities added. So they are directly proportional. More molality, more rise in boiling point. You add a little bit of impurity, molality will be low and the rise in boiling point will be also less. 
So elevation or boiling point of any liquid in a solution is directly proportional to its molality, provided that solution contains non-volatile, non-electrolyte solute. Now, when you change this equality to sorry proportionality to equality, you've got to put a constant. Every time you put a constant, and this constant here in this case is known as ebulloscopic constant. Now, what is ebulloscopy? It is actually a science of boiling or heating. And since we are talking about ele elevation of boiling point, so that's why in this expression of elevation of boiling point, whatever constant appears there should be named as ebulloscopic constant. But sometimes it's also known as molal elevation constant. So what is the actual meaning of this? To understand what is Kb, this constant, you see, I'll, I want to remove this M, molality. I can't just remove just like that. So I'm assuming that the molality of this solution is 1. Imagine any liquid which is converted to a solution of what kind of solution? A solution of molality exactly 1. How do you do that? It's very simple. For example, I want to know what is this ebulloscopic constant of water. So what do I do? I'll take 1 kg of water, 1000 grams. Why 1000 grams? Because if you take 1000 grams of solvent and then add 1 mole of solute, then molality will be equal to 1. So I've taken 1000 grams, 1 kg of water. To that, I've added 1 mole of a non-volatile, non-electrolyte solute. Let's say I have added glucose, 1 mole of glucose. So now what's the molality? It's 1. M is 1. And when M is 1, you know, Kb will be exactly equal to delta Tb. So now it has revealed the real meaning of Kb, that is ebulloscopic constant. Ebulloscopic constant is the rise in boiling point. You know, you've added uh, some amount of glucose, one mole of glucose, so the boiling point of water won't stay at 100. At, when water is pure, it boils at 100. Now, because you've added impurity and you've prepared a solution of molality, one boiling point will rise. So let's say the boiling point of this solution of glucose in water rises to 102 degree Celsius. Let's say this is just an assumed value. So what is the elevation of boiling point? By what amount the boiling point has risen? It's by 2 degree. So the value of delta Tb is 2 degree. And remember that increase in boiling point of water, when you convert water into a solution of molality 1, that increase in boiling point of water is known as ebulloscopic constant of water. So remember this increase in boiling point is a constant. Remember, Kb is a constant. That means if the boiling point of water rises now by 2 degree, next time also it will rise by 2 degree, even if you add a different solute. Okay? So, next time again, I have taken water. How much? 1000 grams. Then I will add 1 mole of urea, not 1 mole of glucose. It's, urea is totally different, you know. 1 mole of urea. So because I have added 1 mole of solute in 1000 grams solvent, so what is the molality now? 1. Okay? And because you have added urea, Boiling point of water will rise, pure water boils at 100, now the solution will boil at higher temperature, but how much? 103? No. This rise in boiling point is a constant, it, is, it remains fixed as long as the molality of the water or solution of water is 1. So it will rise by the same amount, it goes to 102. So what is the elevation of boiling point here? 2 degree. So what happens to a liquid when you add a certain fixed amount of solute whether you add this solute or that solute it doesn't matter as long as you add so same number of moles of solute to a liquid its boiling point will rise and will always rise by the same amount okay so what is ebulloscopic constant first of all it's a constant of a liquid remember it's a property of a liquid for example what is ebulloscopic constant of water it is the increase in boiling point of water when you add uh, one mole of solute or when you prepare a solution of water of molality one what by whatever amount the boiling point of water will rise that rise is a fixed value it will always rise by the same amount of water and that fixed value by which the boiling point of water will always rise when water is converted to into a, a solution of molality one is known as ebulloscopic constant of water actually this is not the exact value of ebulloscopic constant of water it's just an example but uh, if this is the amount by which the boiling point of water will rise, it will always rise by the same amount when you prepare a solution of water of molality 1 and that's called ebulloscopic constant of water. For example, what is the meaning of ebulloscopic constant of benzene is let's say uh, 3 degrees Celsius, which is not true, but then suppose if it's 3 degrees Celsius, this is ebulloscopic constant or Kb of benzene. So what's the meaning of that? 
is the meaning is that if you take benzene and if you add if you prepare a solution of benzene of molality one boiling point of benzene will rise will rise by what amount it will always rise by three degree as long as you prepare a solution of molality one whether you add this or that and that amount by which the boiling point of benzene always rises by a fixed amount in the solution of molality one is known as ebuloscopic constant of benzene okay now look at this phenomenon of elevation of boiling point you see Ele boiling point of water is rising by 2 degree when you add glucose and boiling point of water is rising by 2 degree in its solution when you add urea irrespective of the fact that glucose and urea are different chemically different substances yet as long as you add the same amount of both boiling point of the solution of water will always rise by the same amount elevation of boiling point of any liquid or a solution increase in boiling point of a solution is such a property of a solution which only depends on how much of solute you add as long as you add one mole mm, so, solution will always experience the same rise in the boiling point same, same elevation of bo uh, boiling point it doesn't depend on what you add it only depends on how much you add and such a property you know already is known as a colligative property so this is the second colligative property we have come across first one was um, relative lowering of vapor pressure you know i think you remember uh, relative lowering of vapor pressure of any liquid is uh, or any solution is equal to the mole fraction of the solute it only depends on mole fraction of solute how much of solute added but does not depend on what kind of solute is added in the same manner elevation of boiling point of a solution also depends on how much of solute is added not on the chemical nature so that's why it is a colligative property so i want you to write the definition of ebuloscopic constant from any textbook or you can even google and find i have already stated that so many times so you can even copy from you just pause the video and copy okay now uh, let me expand this formula of rolls law on elevation of boiling point you see rolls law on elevation boiling point directly proportional to the molality then when you make it equal you have to put a constant that is ebuloscopic constant okay why this ebuloscopic constant is also known as molal elevation constant is because it is the rise in boiling point ebuloscopic constant is the increase in boiling point when you have a solution of molality one because it always deals with the solution of molality one that's why it's called molal elevation constant when you have one molal solution whatever elevation happens that is known as molal elevation constant so over here that molality is replaced with the actual formula here you, this is how molality is calculated you know so w2 by m2 number of moles of solute divided by mass of solvent multiplied by 1000 this is the expanded form of Rolle's law elevation of boiling point now again i have taken another vapor pressure temperature curve so here vapor pressure is plotted against temperature in this case i'll start with a pure liquid at high temperature not low temperature okay so the liquid is already at high temperature which means there is a lot of vapor pressure of this liquid so the vapor pressure of the pure liquid is somewhere here very high because temperature is high so i have a pure liquid at high temperature if i start cooling that liquid you know vapor pressure will come down because when temperature goes down vapor pressure comes down temperature is going down vapor pressure is coming down so this is the vapor pressure temperature curve of a pure liquid if you keep on cooling a liquid you know at one point what happens this vapor pressure temperature curve of the liquid suddenly develops a, a bend it develops a kink you know why vapor pressure temperature curve of a pure liquid when you keep on cooling suddenly bends is because if you constantly cool a liquid what happens it will always come to a point where it freezes you can't continuously cool a uh, liquid forever it will always come to freezing point and it starts freezing so this is what happened here after reaching to this temperature t1 this liquid freezes and becomes solid and solid will have a different slope of its vapor pressure temperature curve that's why the curve bends so this is the vapor pressure temperature curve of the pure liquid and beyond this point the pure liquid has frozen to become solid this is the vapor pressure temperature curve of the solid so at this point where the, the vapor pressure temperature curve of liquid state meets solid that's the point where the pure liquid freezes the freezing point of this liquid is marked as t1 now i'll take a solution i'll take a solution of the same liquid so temperature curve of a solution will always be lower than the vapor pressure temperature curve of the pure liquid because for a solution there will uh, there is always lowering of vapor pressure so the vapor pressure curve will always start from the lower end 
So this is the vapor pressure temperature curve of the same, solution of the same liquid, which is also at high temperature. So it's exhibiting quite high vapor pressure. Now, if solution is constantly cool, what happens? Its vapor pressure temperature curve comes down, comes down, and ultimately, the vapor pressure temperature curve of the solution also touches the vapor pressure temperature curve of the solid. So, reaching there at that particular moment, uh, solution also freezes. So, the corresponding freezing point of the solution is T2. Look at this diagram. T2 is naturally less than T1. That means solution always freezes at lower temperature than the pure solvent. So, what happens to a liquid when you add impurity and you convert, convert that to a solution? Its way, freezing point goes down. And that effect is called depression of freezing point. So, on adding impurity, on preparing solution, boiling point increases, but freezing point decreases. And this phenomenon of depression of freezing point can be easily explained using this curve called vapor pressure temperature curve. Now, why freezing point goes down? Is because uh, it's because of the lowering of vapor pressure when the vapor pressure of the solution is lowered it starts from the lower end and so on cooling you know it touches the vapor pressure temperature curve of the solid state at the lower end so which exhibits lower freezing point for the solution so you can explain the phenomena of depression of freezing point using this curve now there's Rawls law even on this phenomena of depression of freezing point according to Rawls law on depression of freezing point Depression of freezing point of any liquid in its solution containing non-volatile non-electrolyte solute is directly proportional to the molality exactly like Rawls law on elevation of boiling point which was directly proportional to molality of the solution. Depression of freezing point is also directly proportional to molality. Now remember this delta Tf is neither the freezing point of the pure liquid nor it is the freezing point of the solution. It is the amount by which the freezing point has gone down. For example, pure water freezes at 0 degree. Now its solution freezes as freezes at minus 2 degree so what is the, what is the depression by what amount the freezing point has gone down below 0 2 degree that 2 degree the amount by which the freezing point has gone down is delta tf and the amount by which the freezing point goes down is it goes down is directly proportional to the molality that means if you prepare a solution of a high molality adding lot of impurity then it will exhibit a huge depression in freezing point because they are directly proportional and if you add a little bit of impurity molality will be low depression of freezing point will be also less now when you turn this proportionality to equality you have to put a constant and the constant is called cryoscopic constant not ebuloscopic now okay it's known as cryoscopic constant let me write that mean word cryoscopic cryoscopic constant or it's also known as molal depression constant not molal elevation but molal depression constant now why is it known as this first of all why cryoscopic because here we are dealing with freezing and the science of freezing is called cryos cryogenics you know and that's why this constant which appears in the depression of freezing points called cryoscopic constant. Now, what is it known as molal depression constant? To know that, let us assume that uh, we, we will have a solution of molality 1 because the moment molality becomes 1, then Kf will be equal to delta Tf. Then we will know the real meaning of Kf. So, we are, <coughs> we are taking a solution of molality 1. In that case, Kf will be equal to delta Tf. So, now we know what is Kf. Kf of any liquid, let's say Kf of water, cryoscopic constant of any liquid, is nothing but a decrease in freezing point of this liquid when you have a solution of this liquid of molality 1. Which means, uh, let's say I want to know what is cryoscopic constant of water, so I'll be taking 1000 gram of water. Why? Because if you take 1000 gram of solvent and add 1 mole of solute, then the molality naturally becomes 1. So I've taken 1000 grams of water, I've added 1 mole of urea. Then what happens now we have a solution of water of molality one then because you've added urea what happens to the freezing point freezing point will come down pure water freezes at zero now because of addition of urea freezing point will come down let's say it freezes at minus two degree celsius so what is the depression of freezing point by what amount of freezing point has gone down it is it has gone down by two degree and this two degree drop in freezing point for water is the cryoscopic constant of water what is cryoscopic constant two degree and you know this is a constant that means now if it has gone down by two degree it will always go down by two deg degree as long as the solvent is water which means later if you take 1000 grams of water and add dif different solute you know not urea glucose one mole 
what is the molality now again one so when molality is one then now because you've added glucose so freezing point will go down uh, that delta tf the amount by which the freezing point goes down will be how much will be again two degree why because that amount by which the freezing point goes down is a constant it remains fixed for water so previously it was depressed by two degree now also it will be depressed by two degree as long as the molality is one so that amount by which the freezing point of any liquid gets depressed when you convert it into a solution of molality one is a fixed value that depression is always fixed for that liquid and that value fixed value is called cryoscopic constant of that liquid suppose if cryoscopic constant of benzene is let's say three degree what's the meaning of that the meaning is that if you prepare a solution of benzene of molality one then freezing point of benzene will always drop by three degree and that fixed value is called cryoscopic constant of benzene okay uh, i'll be writing the expanded form of the rolls law on freezing point uh rolls law on freezing point uh, is directly proportional to molality then you have to have the constant cryoscopic constant and then uh, molality is replaced with actual formula this is the formula okay now i think you have observed one thing that depression of freezing point decrease in freezing point will always happen by the same amount as long as you add the same amount of solute irrespective of the chemical nature first you added one mole of urea water exhibited two degree drop in freezing point next time you add same amount one mole but different substance glucose still water is experiencing the same amount of depression of freezing point that means depression of freezing point of a solution is such a property of a solution which only depends on how much of solute you add but does not depend on what you add whether you add glucose or urea it doesn't matter it remains the same that's why it is a third colligative property so by now you have how many colligative properties you've got three one is uh, elevation of boiling point second is depression of freezing point and the on the on the earlier we had discussed one more it was relative lowering of uh, vapor pressure so these three are the colligative properties we have till now